chapters. Here we cover all kinds of topics around the completion process and parts work. If you don't know what that is, check the description box below. I'll link some videos and information. So today is actually part two of the interview series with Rowan Garlo, who is a CP practitioner like me. Last time we covered enmeshment trauma. And if you haven't checked that out, make sure to watch the video. This time we'll do abandonment trauma, which is the opposite trauma kind of. So, hi Rowan, nice that you're here again. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Please tell us what is abandonment trauma? Yeah, so kind of like how we were talking about with enmeshment trauma having to do with boundaries and our relationships to other people. Um, abandonment trauma is stemming from a really similar thing. So instead of having permeable or mutable or even absent boundaries with other people, we have um, we're growing up in households or around people that have really overly rigid boundaries and then also sometimes a complete absence of a caregiver. So it can be, you know, a huge spectrum all the way from I've got no parents, I've got one parent, I've got, you know, an emotionally unavailable parent, and then maybe one physical parent who's coming and going to maybe they're kind of emotionally present, but I'm not getting hugs or certain kinds of validation. So, you know, when we think about abandonment trauma, we think of like these big events, like somebody walking out of our lives. But it, it can be even perceived abandonment of like mom goes out to dinner and maybe the, the child's not ready yet to like, that can be a traumatizing situation. So it could really be any kind of trauma that results from an interpersonal relationship um, that has to do with not being received essentially um, or having somebody kind of, so there's this kind of energy where enmeshment's a, a, an incoming boundary violation and this is an outgoing boundary violation. Um, and again, like similarly, you know, we will feel very alone in this situation because, you know, we can, it can also be a lack of mirroring, meaning, you know, the people with abandonment trauma can also have issues with identity because um, even a lack of mirroring suggests that I'm not being seen in some way. There's a lack of of a person in my reality with me. Definitely. And I think that this is such a good point to make because I think a lot of people forget that boundaries are not just something that you don't want. It's also something that you want. So yeah. boundary violence also there's something you want and it's just not given to you. And that is so super painful as well because, um, yeah. And what we said also before where we see that, um, um, abandonment and enmeshment is kind of like has similar qualities because in, in abandonment trauma you obviously feel very alone because you don't feel seen and your needs are not being met but in um, enmeshment you also don't feel seen because yeah. other people do not see you as a person and do not like respect you as an individual so you also don't feel seen you just feel like um, it could be anyone that they are doing this to yeah yeah and um and something else I think worth mentioning too is that you know, you'll, you'll see like an overlap sometimes between abandonment and enmeshment in a person, this kind of push pull or disorganized way of attaching to people. Um, because a lot of people have both experiences in their family home, because if everything like you can see how these are all like polarities. So like we've got the narcissist and the codependent and they're both actually the same. They're just doing, uh, getting their needs met in different ways, even though the seed of them is the same. And so um, you'll see that it'll create the dysfunction of an enmeshed person, like, cause that's the style of how they're relating. There is no healthy boundaries in a codependent narcissistic relationship. Um, there's not a lot of healthy anything. Um, but so you're, you're seeing like the, these types of traumas that are coming out of both polarities. So you're going to you're going to get maybe one child that comes out of that who tends more on this side of things. And, you know, it's really hard to say what creates an individual to moving one way versus the other, um, or even having a little bit of both. But yeah, so it's, it's just so important to think about it as a really gray area. Every person's going to be an individual coming out of various levels of dysfunction 
So which is why we need adaptive and individualized approaches to healing that can really just meet a person where they are because we don't know where they are on that spectrum. Definitely. And I can see this so clearly, for example, in my family, also having this narcissist codependent on a spectrum. Um, so I actually tend to be more the enmeshment person. You know, I'm always like super aware of everything. I'm very empathic and I totally know what's going on. And I, I feel like I lose myself. And my brother's like the opposite. He's more of like super independent. He's so afraid that someone like gets into his space. So I felt like he has more of this um, abandonment. But I myself can also feel sometimes these abandonment issues, you know, when I, I'm really afraid that someone will leave me for example and yeah. um yeah that's a, such a good point you're making that um we can have both and um and that's uh, really important to know that it's not like one fixed thing and that is also not a terrible you know diagnosis or whatever it doesn't even have to be a diagnosis it's just something yeah. that you can understand yourself better because we are still functioning humans mostly yeah. just and um, yeah there's areas that we can improve and it will help us to live better lives yeah, i think it's important to also talk about how um so like these are all the these traumas essentially are just dysfunctional ways of relating to people and I think that what ends up happening both you could think about it from a metaphysical standpoint or just from an organismic like biological standpoint we have this need as humans to complete these cycles of trauma so we're going to end up lining up with partners that really mirror this original whatever these original dynamics were so you might have one partner that really mirrors the relationship you had with your mother and then another that might with your father um, or something in between. And so our being is really trying to like learn the lesson, complete the action, be able to successfully navigate into a healthy relationship with starting at dysfunction. So where a lot of times you'll see people with severe abandonment trauma really going for the avoidant person, going for the person who's actually the unhealthy and unsafe relationship for them that's only going to further re-traumatize them um, because unfortunately, you know, the beings thinking, yes, if I can make this right, then I can finally move through this process. So it's really coming from a good place, but it, a lot of times, like I said, just ends up being re-traumatizing because it's the same situation. So it's really important to note how our relationships in adulthood will mirror these childhood relationships if we don't um, inter have intervention at some point from a different source of knowledge or something to help us or a guide or someone that can help us move through these ways of relating um, because yeah and then you're like you feel like it's all happening all over again and then it's like oh why is this um, and it can also be confusing because our our wires actually are getting crossed in our body when this happens so you're actually looking at an avoidant person and your being is literally sending chemical cascades through your body that say, this is love. So it's like, we're actually kind of having to cognitively go against some of these biological patterns that we've been encoded with so that we can, and it's going to feel funny at first, like choosing into a safe, healthy relationship might not have the same feeling flavor that going towards that really extreme polarity would have in your body. So it's going to feel like, I don't really think this is the person for me. And that's often why we get confused because our wires are just crossed about what even is supposed to feel like a healthy relationship. Cause most of us are having dysfunctional relationships. So why would we know that, you know? Definitely. And I think that's such a good point you were making that we also stop a bit beating ourselves up, you know, like just making the same mistake again, you know, so it true. is. A, yes, it has a lot to do with biology. Um, and um, we often really can't help ourselves because in the end, yeah, we, we want this connection and this love that we crave so much. And it's these inner children that are so hurt that want this. But that's why it's so good to um, gain awareness of this. And so the, the, the typical person with abandonment trauma, like what do they crave in relationships and what kind of, and how do they relate? Yeah, so it's going to be different, obviously, for every person that has abandonment trauma. But usually um, someone will 
really benefit by having um, whether it's an intimate relationship or a friendship type relationship with someone who I don't want to say can like fully make that person their world, but it's really important that they have relationships with people who are initiating contact and who are like going out of their way to consistently show this person. And it's, you know, two way street, but like people that have forward moving energy towards you that you don't have to work so hard to be in relationship with. It's really healing. I would say one thing that's can be difficult for people with abandonment trauma is um, letting go of past relationships that are no longer serving them because we, they have, we haven't yet, when you're living from that paradigm, you haven't yet figured out that it's a choice to like, it's a choice to be in a relationship Um, because you didn't have a choice. You know, people were just not there or there was a lack of something And so to like let go of something feels like it's, you're just going to create the same feeling that you had, even if maybe the relationship isn't super healthy. So let's say you have an ex-boyfriend, somebody with abandonment trauma might have a harder time letting go of that, that role or some part that that person played for them, even if it's hurting them, because to let go would mean, you know, but then you also see on the other end, um, in relationships, leaving people before the other person can leave them so -hmm. that they also don't have to feel that extreme sense of being abandoned by someone. Um, And a lot of times before is really necessary with it before giving it a full chance. Um, So there's like two ends of the spectrum where you can, and everything in between where you see people becoming really clingy in relationships and super desperate to not get that person, you know, even just maybe walking out the front door, really sensitive to any perceived rejection. Um, But then on the other end, also uh, somebody who has abandonment issues, who is potentially codependent at one point, uh, can all the time swing to the narcissist end and become very independent, maybe isolate themselves from other people because they're so terrified that this feeling is going to happen again. And so it's like, why better just not have a relationship at all? Because relationship means extreme pain and it's better actually if I just stay isolated because it's not extreme this way and it's not extreme that way so it becomes the self-protection yeah but it's also dangerous in the long run because it's not actually serving the person it's it's actually hurting them more because now they've become the person that's unsafe to have relationships with because they're not emotionally present or being able to be with people and so it's like I they still have a part of them that wants that relationship but now they become someone that's undesirable to be in relationship with and then creates a whole other cycle but yeah exactly so they are like yeah perpetuating basically the their own trauma Mm -hmm. yeah okay so let's talk yeah. um, about ways how to, what to do when you feel like you have abandonment trauma and you may be really wanting to have a relationship or maybe you are super scared of losing someone. Yeah, I mean, obviously like the same approach as before, like working with those really primal emotions, not forcing yourself to do anything that feels inherently unsafe for your being, but uh, working in a stable relationship. Like this is why a relationship with a therapist can actually be really great because, um, this is a secure attachment in your life with a person who is not going to violate your boundaries. And they're also not typically going to pull away from you. So if you can find a good therapist, if you have access to that, not everybody has access to that, um, because of financial reasons or otherwise, but, having access to uh, a stable, secure attachment in your life is super important to building and rebuilding the patterns in your body around what it means to have relationship. Um, And that's really the answer for anyone who struggles with relationship problems. But it can be difficult just saying that because it's like, well, no shit, but like I look around my reality and I don't see those people. And so part of it is also about gearing towards your internal world and your internal fragmentation and looking at how am I abandoning parts of myself? Um, Because 
it's a macro micro like they're both happening at the same time your external and your internal and it wasn't like you were born into this world abandoning yourself but you had to do that and so we know that that's the mechanism that's happening inside your own system so whether it's having parts of yourself that are not distinguished enough or having parts of yourself that are over coupled um either way like looking at the patterns of how do you leave yourself in in situations when maybe you're emotional um, how can i start to repair the relationships i have with my body with my digestive system with my heart and that coupled with um when you start to like feel what that feels like in your body you're also more likely to feel what that feels like with other people and vice versa when you feel like what that feel that safety feels like with other people it's also going to translate into hmm, i wonder how i could embody that internally so sort of this internal external holistic approach of re-relating relearning how to relate yeah definitely and i think that that makes also so much sense because um yeah i started to do lots of parts work also in my personal life and for relationship like that's amazing because mm. Um, it's really like your inner relationship also um, yeah, mirrors the outside. I like see it so much and just getting to know yourself like this is incredible because often you don't even notice what you're actually doing to perpetuate the situation. But I also think what you said, um, yeah, the relationship, safe relationships and a therapeutic relationship can be really, really amazing for that um, to even have this missing experience to even be able to start having trust. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So good. Yep. And trust is not something that we should expect, you know, to just have off the bat. Like our trust really has been betrayed if you come from a trauma background in any way, which we all do. Um, and so it's like, I used to really think that, like, I mean, I was pretty naive with trusting people and I actually had no reason to be other than just like, yeah, I was like, what do you mean? You should always trust people. Like people are generally good. And then I started realizing like, yeah, okay, well, even if that's the case, um, I was like hurting myself because I was just like coming into relationships with people and just like, here it all is. And here I am and here's all my trust. And now I can just know that you'll support me. And it's like, wow, that's a little crazy. Um, but people who come from dysfunctional relationships will do that. They'll go to one extreme or the other and they won't see how that's actually potentially hurting themselves and so i had to learn to step back and and give out my trust to people in doses and um and sort of see okay well if it, you know here's my authentic self but like there's different levels of trust in a relationship and let's see how we do with each other in this scenario and then okay yeah this seems like um which is just totally foreign i mean if you would have told me to do that a few years ago i would have been like I don't even want to do that. That's crazy. Why would you do that? Like, I don't even know how to do that. People are, you know, you just got to dive in head first and hope you don't get your head smashed on the bottom. <laughs> totally. I think there's a real pearl you shared here at the end of this interview, because um, it, I learned this actually also in the training when I was there um, with you training as my mentor. Um, I think you said that, or was it Teal? I don't remember, but um, it was such a, I think it was teal. Yeah. Yeah. I was like so mega true. And I tell this now to every one of my clients and I can see them just relaxing because yeah. it's like a permission to, um, I always tell them that their boundaries is the most important thing for me. And, um, they have no reason to trust me. They don't know me and that that's really, really, you know, good because mm -hmm. if they don't want to do this anymore. They can go out. Like it's, they have the power in the situation and that's what is so incredible and also what i want to say about relationships we feel like we are in this age where i mean relationships are crappy no one knows how to do it and then either we like as you say jump in and you know we have sex after we meet them immediately um or it's like in other cultures like super weird that people have like no sexual relationship but what i wanted to say is like this kind of like testing out and actually getting to know each other as people um, it's like, it's like, yeah, very, very dysfunctional. So a very good tip that you said here. <laughs> yeah. So 
Thanks, Oka. Oh, maybe let's do a quick little recap what we've learned today. So abandonment trauma is all about violating the external boundaries, meaning that um, you are not getting what you want. People are not giving you attention. People are not giving you love. It is all on a spectrum. It can be like that maybe your parents are not even here, or it can be that maybe sometimes your parents are emotionally unavailable. And um, yeah, it can be that in relationships, if you suffer from abandonment trauma, you struggle with letting people in or you're clinging too much. But um, it's all about having the experience of having a relationship that is safe and secure. And even if you let go of relationships, that it doesn't mean that um, yeah, you will be forever abandoned. And of course, creating the relationship in yourself and doing lots and lots of completion process because that's the best thing ever anyways. And um, in the end, I wanted to just like give you the stage, like um, to just like- Yeah, okay. So one last thing I just wanted to mention is that there is nothing wrong with wanting a relationship with somebody who's like height, like really close to you. Like maybe you work together um, and you spend a good portion of your day together. Like there are relationships out there that are like that. And for some people that's gonna be really healing. And that there's also nothing wrong with wanting a relationship with someone where you both have jobs. Maybe you see each other every few days um, and that feels good for you. So it's, it's really about just finding out what's good for you and then finding if you're interested in having a relationship, that's, you know, whatever the relationship is, uh, friendship or not, that it's compatible with both people's um, desired style of having a relationship and that neither you know either side there's there's nothing right or wrong or anything about any of them and that's all possible because if you exist and you want a super close relationship there's other people out there that have that same thing right we're not happening in isolation so um yeah okay so I, I'm also a completion process practitioner, which you guys already know. Um, I'm also training right now to become a somatic experiencing practitioner, which is uh, another form of trauma healing, another modality that uh, involves the body as well. And yeah, that's that's basically me. So you can you can get a hold of me on my website at rowangarlow.com um, if you're interested in working with me. And I'm sure those links will be provided below. So. <laughs> What she forgot to mention is that she is really, really amazing. And I know that because she was actually my mentor when I trained as a CP practitioner. That's why I'm also really awesome because she trained me. And um, yeah, check out also my website and um, really the completion process um, has been one of the most amazing healing modalities I've ever come across. And I'll so, so highly recommend it because it's so healing. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah, bye guys.